Thank you for joining the March 12th, 2019 Volta call. We do record the meetings and post them to YouTube, so please keep that in mind during the discussions and presentations if we do have any presentations today. And with that, we'll get started for today. We're about a week into our active sprint, Sprint 15. And we have a handful of new JIRAs that we'll review at the start of the call, and then we'll go into some updates uh, to check on our status for Sprint 15 for a number of issues. I know there are a number of, of merges that have been going in over the past week. And then with that, I think I'll switch over to start with Bull 1505. And let me see if we've got Ken on the bridge. I don't see Ken yet, but we'll go ahead and start with this one. This one is complete already. This uh, is Judy, Senate this is Rich. Yes. Uh, Ken, oh. Ken is away on vacation. He'll be back tomorrow. So I don't think oh, I'll be able to, it. yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so this one is to set a key when publishing on the Kafka bus. This one has already been completed in the active sprint. So let me just uh, take a moment to see if anyone from the group has questions that we should take back to Ken. All right, hearing none, I'll move on to the next item. Next is bowl 1506. This was a defect that was raised and it looks like Chip has already completed this in the active sprint as well. So this one is open OMCI alarm database logging errors and he has a description there. Uh, and I think I saw him joining the bridge. Chip, are you connected on the audio? Yes, I'm, I, I, yeah, I just got here. Okay, yeah, you have, go ahead. Yeah, the, yeah, this, this was, this is just, uh, just needed to be changed to debug. So when we got a, the first alarm and we're adding an entry into the database, the manage entity instance didn't exist. So it would put out an error message. And of course, the reason it didn't exist is, no alarms have been raised or learned at that time. So I, I changed it to a debug. So it was just mainly a log message change that could, I thought could have been something bigger. Any questions for Chip? All right, thank you for that update, so, Chip. Uh, Judy, oh, back, oh, to the, ahead, uh, back to the 1505 since Richard's here, what, what, what does he mean, uh, set a key? Um, what 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 is to Richard? Do you know what what is a key means, or anybody on the community here understand what does it mean? Set a key. Um, so um, Kafka has the ability to set keys for every message that is posted, um, and then the key can be used. I believe when you um, query messages, you can always get the last message of a specific key if you want. So. Um, I'm not sure if that's what he means, but that that would be my understanding of keys with respect to Kafka. Okay. So let me jump over to Garrett for a second. Uh, so probably don't want to take time to do it now, but but Sean, the link to Garrett is in there, so maybe I'll go take a look at that. After okay. The call also. Okay. Thanks. All right, anything else? I'll move on to 1507, configurable alarm severity for alarm types. And this one was opened by Tom. And uh, at this point, we don't have an owner for this item, so it's not scoped into a particular sprint. So this was to provide configurability for alarm severity for various alarm types. And he has a description of the requirements related to this. In the, in the description field. And I'm not sure if we have Tom on the bridge. Any comments for this item or questions that need to be taken back? I think this is related to the, the you know, the, the threat of the, 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 the on, in the vote I discussed uh, yeah. regarding to alarm severity setting and, and, and then alarm filtering, right? So I think this, uh, Again, we're probably going to re, re address this issue uh, during the lockdown. Um, it, it's still, still, um, uh, uh, pardon me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, hi, Mike. 
Um, so, so, so it's a long severity. Is, you know how exactly we set. You know the long severity. Um, is that on the hardware? I, I think the consensus is it should be set on the hardware level. Um, but exactly how um, we can set it, whether using an ARM template when the device can get uh, bring up, and then uh, and then <coughs> and then the the ARM template could be service provider specific. <coughs> so I think we'll talk about this a more more uniform um, um, strategy during the lockdown. Okay, thanks, John. Any questions from the group? Okay, and then we'll expect to have a follow-up discussion uh, at the lockdown. And of course, feel free to continue discussion on Volta Discuss in the meanwhile. Then the next one was, I think, just a duplicate that was closed. So we'll go on to 1509, synchronization issue during data updates with multiple cores. And this one was opened and is being worked by Stefan. And I'm not sure if we have Stefan on the bridge. I don't think we do. Richard, Stefan, is there Steph, Stefan's also on vacation. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's March All break right. over here. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're guarding the fort, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Stefan continues to work model issues as they come up. Okay. okay. So this one, I think. I think, uh, do we have any questions from the group that we need to take back to Stefan? We can post them in the comments field. I think this is related to the, you know, when the core has, is active, active, how do they, you know, uh, how they write to the XCD stuff. I think there's some racing condition going on. Yeah, that's con concurrency issue between uh, the multiple hosts. Yeah, correct. Okay. So I think probably my main question here was it's active, so I think I'd be planning to move it into Sprint 15. Uh, Stefan's not here to confirm or deny that, so I'll probably go ahead and do that offline. And if that's not right, then when he's back from vacation, we can address that. Then the next item is 1510, Inner Adapter Communication Implementation in OpenOLT Adapter Volta 2.x. And this was reported and is being worked by Abilash. And let me see if we have any comments from the group. I think this one is just open. Um, I think uh, yeah. uh, Abilash is asking, uh, I think it's under the threat we're talking about, the threat we're talking about, you know, the CIG is also working on the Golan based um, adapter. Yeah. So, so, so I think the, the thing is, you know, he start open up some of the uh, create additional user stories, so the community can 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 pick it up, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. So, so Lynn, is that something yeah. um, the CIG is going to take on this one? Yes, or yes. We'll take this uh, story. Uh, let you know if we have any questions. Okay. Thanks. So, so Julie, let's assign this one to to Lynn. So it was it was already assigned. So we need to change the assignee. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. For what it's worth, the uh, the Python Open OLT, Python Open ONU, uh, very recently has been able to have succeed in inner adapter communication. Though there may be a, a model to pattern there, especially if the ONU is going to stay in Python, we probably need to make sure that Go Open OLT and the Python Open OLT all work with the same O and U. Okay. So Lynn, if you have any question, ask Matt. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just look at this, uh, uh, this issue and uh, I think I need to talk to, uh, to Matt or uh, Ablash in detail offline. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me do a refresh, see if anything else came in. And I don't see any additional issues open. So at that point, what we'll go next is looking at some of the updates for the Sprint 15 items. We'll go back to our active Sprint board and do a refresh before I get started.
Okay, and Chip, I just wanted to check with you. I know you were working on 525 for the OMCI exchange to use byte string. I can't read the rest of it, it's blocked off here. Um, for the OMCI message updates you were doing. And that one, there are a number of subtasks related. Are we expecting this will complete in Sprint 15? Um, probably not. I'm, I'm currently okay. not working much on the containerization because I'm trying to wrap up uh, existing 1.x okay. open OMCI issues before I leave. Okay. All right. And then let me see if we've got, I don't see Jason on. Okay, I was going to touch on this item here. Um, let me see, do we have a MIT? I don't see a MIT on. And I don't see Bjorn. All right, so I will skip over 1022 today. And let me scroll down a little bit further. And then 1059, this one is being worked uh, by North Forge uh, for the test case. Any issues here that we need to take up with the group for 1059? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So let me go ahead and move on. Oops, and my screen keeps jumping down. Apologies for all the scrolling. Okay, so Vol 1090, this is the next item that's uh, in the in progress list. Chip, this is another one you're working. Operational status ONT Uni port data. You've had comments previously about the availability of that info uh, from various MEs, but then some work needed to be done for AVCs. And so it looks like you've taken this on. Are you expecting this one to complete in Sprint 15? Yeah, I think that'll complete. And there's actually someone from at t also that's, that's needing to consume that. We started okay. a conversation yesterday. So uh, the initial put in, and there's probably a follow on after V2.0 that, that we can address okay. during the lockdown on how to, how to improve KPIs and uh, PM collection. Okay. And another question, do you have an idea about the story point estimate for this or still too early for that? Oh, uh, it, it's actually fairly simple. Um, I didn't realize there was one not one on there. I I would probably put it at a three at the most. Okay, thanks. Whoop. And uh, let's try and go back. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Let's try this again. Huh. Did you get a new computer? No, I'm waiting for it to be migrated to it. So I'm still on my old one. The new one's in another office. Huh, there we go. I think I got that updated. All right, Chip, thanks for that update. The next item, 1339. And this one is being worked by Girish and is currently in progress. And I don't think we have Girish on the bridge today. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next item, or let me see if we've got Sean Misset. I think Sean is traveling. Okay. Then we'll move on to the next, which is 1374. This one is on the OLT activation with the edge core. This is for the Golang Open OLT adapter. And this one, I did have a question, but I'm not sure if we'll have anyone on who can answer it today. So this one looked like it, um, there's a, a closed garret related to this. I'm not sure if this item is actually done at this point or if there's still work in progress. Do we have anyone on who can speak to that issue? Uh, I didn't hear the question, but this uh, particular change had been merged in yesterday. Okay, so my question was whether it was done or if there's still some related work that we're waiting on. I would rather the owner leave it open yeah so i think we'll do that wait till we can catch up with either emit or a funding and find out okay but there was an then, admit for the go line yeah. adapter so there are, the pieces are there so yep so hopefully this one is done or at least close to it so we'll move on to the next one 1376 and this one i didn't see anything in garrett yet so we can move on
and same thing for 1377 and 1378. Julia, are those the one yeah. we moved? We moved to the the sprint. I think we, yes, we so moved these those. were ones that were in progress. So last week we right. we did that. So I'm I was just catching up on on some where I'd seen Garrett come in, and I'm trying to find where the rest of them are. Oh, so the 1379 is actually they're going to, they're going to implement the technology profile in the Go based uh, Open OT adapter, right? 1370 uh, 1379. Yes. Got that highlighted here. Yeah. Looks like some changes have come in, so let me refresh the screen. Sean, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about with that one? No. Okay. And then we've got 1399 and uh, Richard, I think I actually had a question for you. If this one was complete, I did see there was a, a closed garret for this. Yes, it's complete. Okay, let me move that one over. Thanks. Thanks, Richard. Okay, and I don't think we had anything yet for 1402. And 1403 is in progress. Let me scroll back down a little bit further. I think the integration testing is still underway. So Richard, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that still is is in progress. So I'm not expecting. Yes, it's, it's in progress, and we, we, you know, it's going to be a continuing effort as we yes. uh, uh, tackle those uh, synchronization issues. Okay, and then the HA1 as well. 1410, I did have a question if this, uh, this is integration testing, so this may not be done either. So 1410 was integration testing between OF agent, affinity router, and bolted core. Uh, yeah, that's this one is, yeah, it's still ongoing, and, when, okay. and again, will have to be redone when, when some of the uh, synchronization okay. refactoring is done. True. All right, thank you. Then let's go on to 14. 47 is still in progress. And then I just wanted to check on 1452, Matt or Arun. Looks like we have a number of, of gears that have closed out. We've got one open one. Are we expecting, is this one nearing completion or is, um, uh, this one's on going. To check on. Okay. So there are parts that are there, like um, device and port are there, creation, logical device, logical port now are there. Now, the rest of it is going to be the life cycle of those, deletion, okay. uh, disable, things like that. Uh, there was a change Arun committed to, uh, yesterday, I think, for delete or disable, and I was going to look at that today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the group? Okay. And then the next one was on the Open ONU. And Matt, this one was yours. And I wanted to check if we have, I saw a number of closed garrets. I didn't see any open at this point. I didn't know if this was still ongoing. Uh, this one might close. Um, uh, this one is another one where there are some functions that now use the core proxy API, but not all of them. Uh, some of okay. the, again, the other lifecycle functions may not be there, but the, Uh, add port, add device are working, but there will be a number of uh, other ones that might need to come with it as well. This one might might need to be broken up into other stories as well. Okay. That kind of with other parts. Okay. So we'll leave that open then at this point, and then break it down further if needed. Thanks, Matt. And then uh, 1454. This one had a number of of Garrett's come in and close as well. I think. I think this was yours as well. Update and verify OMCI proxying with OLT adapter. Yeah, this one is probably going to close soon. Um, that does now work. We can now proxy inner adapter message, OMCI, and successfully mid sync. So, um, great. That, that's that one. All right. And then 1460 is the next item. And this one, I don't know if William is on the bridge with you over there. This is for create and populate a Volta Protos repo. 
So we had a number yeah. that. Um, yeah, so there was a there was a commit to pet for doing some testing of how it works. So, uh, but I need to okay. do another one to kind of change what I did. Uh, it's not ready yet, so that commit was just okay. partial. But the Python, the Python version. Oh, but the stuff. Python the Python part of the the setup is is complete. Uh, so what's in part for now is is the same thing for Go. Ah, so. Okay, so 1460, I think, was for the Python one. So is that one we can close then? Well, well, I mean, it happens to be under that epic because that's where we created it. But the, the point of this story is really to create one Protos repo for all the yeah. projects. Okay, okay. Whether you're using Python or Go. Got it. Okay. Sorry about that. So we'll leave that one open. And then 1473. This one was for convert and verify all open OLT adapter agent calls or core proxy compliant. And this is just a specific task off the story above. Um, yeah, I think it's probably ongoing. This one's partial, partially done. Okay. Okay. And then I don't think we had anything in Garrett for 1477. And similarly for 1484, I know a lot of these are being worked under that containerization brigade, but did want to touch on things if it looked like maybe they were nearing completion. I think we'll keep scrolling down. And then 1493, this was another one with a number of closed garrets. Uh, Matt, another of yours, open ONU verify open OMCI agent and state machine. Is that one still ongoing? The MIB synchronizer state machine is behaving nicely. I haven't checked the other ones, um, but okay. I expect, given that inner adapter messaging is working, uh, the, mm -hmm. the rest should fall into place pretty easily. Okay, thanks. And then this one we just talked about at the beginning of the call for 1510. So that's it for the in progress items that we have noted for this sprint. And then we have a number that are still in the to do task. And Sean, you may need to go on mute unless you were trying to say something. And then the uh, items in the to-do column we're expecting will move over once people have time freed up as the in-progress work closes out. So let me check with the group. Are there any items in the to-do column, we can scroll through it quickly here, that need to be discussed with the group on the call today? So there's our first batch. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, let me see if we've got Keita on the bridge. Yes, I'm on. Ah, you are on the bridge. Okay. I had a question for you on 1348 and 1349. So 1348 is EPON adapter for testing EPON support in technology profile. And this is for testing purposes. Are we are you expecting that this one will will be completed in sprint 15 uh to be honest you know i don't have time to complete this task until okay. the end of the sprint unfortunately then okay. yeah okay and then 1349 was epon adapter for testing epon support in tech profile and it, this one i'm guessing is the same situation yes right okay all right, thank you. So I'll make a, go ahead, Sean. So Keda-san, uh, do you think the, the, the for the EPON support for, 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 for your work, mm -hmm. uh, does it need to be in Volta 2.0 or it can be pushed out to Volta 2.1? Uh, I guess this, um, this EPON, tech, EPON support uh, in technology profile would be put into the 2.1 instead of 2.0. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Julie, maybe we can move it out. I think so. So, I have a comment here that we'll plan to move it to 2.1. And then, actually, I can do that here, and then we can move it out of the sprint after as well. Thank you, Keita. You know, but if, if, if there's something you wanted to be included in 2.0, let us know. 
Okay, thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have those captured. Let me update this here as well. Uh, 2.1. Okay, and then I think we'll move those. Kato Song, should I just move this into the backlog then and pick them up with 2.1? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so we have that done. Thank you for that update. And let me go back to where we are here. That one will close out when when we finish the core work and the adapter work. Okay, and then we have- So, so, uh, yes. uh, uh, so Matt, can you uh, remind me again? So the, while we're doing the containerization uh, on, the, on the Python uh, adapter, right? Open OT adapter, it's so, so that, that um, internal <coughs> flow decomposer within the Open OT adapter will, 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 will not be part of it, right? Yeah, there's no way with the new core to bypass flow decomposition. So a lot of the flow manager class and its set of functions have to be uh, refactored considerably to to uh, take in the more direct flows. Um, a lot of it, I think, is going to go away. Uh, for what right. it's worth, it simplifies things quite a bit. Um, but it's bringing up questions about keeping track of what the OLP knows about versus keeping the adapter stateless and not trying to keep track of what's been pushed or not pushed versus just pushing everything or removing everything as being told. Um, but one way or another, yeah, we uh, we will not be bypassing flow decomposer in 2.x in any way. So whether one way or another, we're working on it. Great. So Julie, I, I don't know, you know, this is the byproduct of the, com, you know, I, I I wonder what we can just, uh, just leave it there. <laughs> well, yeah, that was what we decided. Me, we can just, you know, I'll, I'll keep track of it and amongst all the other things I'm keeping track of, but uh, um, okay. I expect we when we close to... out flow, de flow decomposition or flow injection in the new 2.x adapters, um, this will get closed right along with, with that. Great. Yeah, so Sean, we talked about, about it previously, whether to keep it open, and at that time we decided to go ahead and leave it open. Um, so Matt, I've got you assigned to it now, and so you can track the appropriate point to close it out. All right. Sean, any other questions? I'm good. Okay. And then we have a number of defects that we have in the to-do column as well. And some of these are, are uh, relatively recent issues, last roughly month or so here. Uh, so those we don't have owners yet, so 1444 is on the uh, open OLT, on OLT disable and re-enable, OLT remains in unreachable state. So this one, I think we had a question if this was resolved by one of the fixes that Shad did. Shad, I think I saw you on the bridge. Do you know if this issue is resolved by by some of the other work you did? 1443 um, was what folks were thinking. 1443, I'm kind of zoned out over here. Which is this? Oh, that's okay. So uh, this particular oh, issue yeah. was yes. for this, on... This is, is this, um, I fixed something similar on 1.6. So it, uh, if this is 1.6, then it's fixed, but uh, not 2.0. I'm oh, sorry, 1.1.x. 1. 1. 1. Okay. So maybe we do need to leave this one open then. Okay. So I'll leave that open. We don't have an owner for it yet. Hopefully we'll get this picked up in the sprint. And then 1445 is another on open all key. On bolted instance restart and reconcile, ONU is not in the right state and end-to-end -end traffic is interrupted. That one Girish has assigned to himself. And so we'll see if that one gets picked up. I don't think Girish is on the call today. And then 1456, is for delete and OLT fails in V2. Ken does that, have that one assigned to himself. And so hopefully this one will get resolved in sprint 15 as well. 
and uh, then we have a number of tasks related to the ongoing work also. I think, let me go back to new stories. Uh, got most of the containerization ones there that we pulled in at the right point. Then we had one more defect, 1497, that Stefan uh, has assigned to him. So I think that one will get pulled in when resources are available. I think that covers it for the defects that are in the to-do state. Most of the rest are tasks or stories related to ongoing work. And then I think as the to-do, as the in-progress items are closed out, then some of those to-dos will get picked up. All right, any other items that need to be discussed in detail with the group on the call today? Okay, so I think that's it for our sprint updates. Let me go back to our agenda screen. So we did have, and I'm not sure if we have Sarov, I don't see Sarov on the bridge. We had last week talked about potentially targeting a demo for the tech profile work that's been completed recently or is undergoing. I talked to Sarov yesterday. Yeah. Um, so potentially, I think that's the one of the item we'll add it to the face to face meeting. Um, okay. I think, you know, so next week is the last week, right? They're, they're wrapping it up right now. Um, but the, the so the demo is, I, I, I believe, we'll be doing the face to face meeting. Okay. All right. So I have that updated. We'll try and do that demo at the face to face meeting. And then uh, let's see. Then, Sean, I wanted to check with you also. Did you have a discussion topic you wanted for this Thursday related to alarms in PM? Um, possible. Uh, I have not think okay. about it yet. <laughs> okay. So um, we'll, we'll figure that out before Thursday. And if we do have an agenda topic for Thursday, we'll, we'll add that in. Okay, so I think that's it then for the updates for today. Are there any other discussion topics that need to be brought forward for a Thursday call? I know we've so been Julie, pretty active with both to discuss, yes. What What's the conclusion in regard, because we, we know the the 2.0 um, require additional sprints? Or we did not get, I did not get any feedback on our last call. So it was agreed that we don't have resources to complete it by the end of sprint 15 but there is no feedback regarding whether um we need to add additional sprints how many we need to add and and adjusting the timeline so we need to have a decision on that at some point if that has to happen during the face-to-face -face, we can do that there if it can be resolved before that would be great as well but didn't get any concrete feedback other than you know we need additional sprints basically I we know that for the containerization work we estimated I think two to three sprints to complete that okay so I think the decision needs to be at the end of sprint 15 is there anything that is of value to release for a 2.0 and I think our previous assumption had been that we needed to have the tech tech profile work the containerization of adapters and the core work completed. And so if one of those three isn't done, I don't think we have a working release for 2.0 uh, that would make it worth releasing it at that time. So I think adding sprints makes the most sense, but that needs to be a, a an agreed decision from the group on how we proceed. Okay. Um... I will, I'll be sending out the 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 the, the topics of the uh, during the lockdown, and then I'll work out the the de detailed schedule. Um, the the things common for both VOTA and uh, CBA we're probably going to address on the first day during the te uh, face to face meeting. Uh, we currently have about 35 attendee to attend on site uh, on doing the face to face meeting. Um, and Matt, is that still correct? Are you going to bring the a part in on site? Uh, the foundry is going to. If 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 it is of any value, uh, you know, showing up with hardware to show something that we've all seen a bunch of times, you know, might not be of much value. So if there's something specific we want to show off, sure. But you know, otherwise, we are close by and we have the means to bring things. Is really all the offer is. 
great. Um, um, and then I also want, uh, I think potentially there can be a remote access also, uh, because I think the technology profile will, be need, will need to be demoed. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so we currently have 35 uh, assignee. Um, uh, uh, I think it was going to be pretty good discussion, good, pretty good meeting combined with the SIBA project also. Um, I think that's, uh, and as I said, I'll share the, the the highlight agenda topic. We're definitely going to address during the during the three day lockdown um, on the vote to discuss again. Um, so, looking forward to see everybody at uh, Huntsville. Um, Julie, back to you. Okay, thanks, Sean. So, since we were talking about additional sprints for 2.0, kind of to recap. What we were looking at on Thursday's call, I believe it was, is here is our current roadmap that we have up on the wiki. And so if we need to add, say we add two sprints to 2.0, that would take us through the end of April or into early May. And then, so you can see it's, it would kind of take away two sprints from what we had here planned for 2.0. One, and then we would need to determine what happens with the schedule for 2.1. Does it get compressed and scope reduced, or do we have enough resources to to deliver the work that remains here in this shortened time? How do we want to manage the schedule for these two releases? Because I think there are are other discussions about a a, a June date here related to uh, SIBA also. Or do we so, take items in the current 2.0 green yep. box releases? Instead of two releases, we have three. Um, I certainly think tech profile is worth being a release on its own, given all the work that's gone into it. Um, you know, whether we call that 2.0 or whether we call it, you know, the the day in the month or 1.10, if we want to feel special about a number. Um, but you know, having more stuff piled up in the green box, and then we just keep kicking the can down the calendar, yeah. kind of just defeats the point. Um, so maybe some of that stuff just needs to be split out into what's been finished, give it a release number, and then call 2.0 just containerization and maybe a couple other things. But that's okay. just my view. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think um, tech profiles. Is, I think we're, we're aiming for too much over here. Tech profiles just came in into into 1.0x. I think. Uh, um, I think, I think it would be nice to, to just do containerization, uh, have have a release with some demo with that, and then bring in tech profiles after that. Yeah, but the tech profile won't be part of containerization, certainly. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get it working as it is when we branch it off at 1.6. So, yeah, I expect tech profile in a containerized setup will be a 2.1 or later um, merge. Okay. Okay, so uh, Sean Ying, do you want to talk about that? Uh, should we try and cover that on some more roadmap planning on Thursday, or or we could do it next Thursday as well? Um, let's well, let's work it offline. Okay, all right. And in even this thing about the in-band management, I don't think that that will also make it in. Uh, that needs. Uh, I think that this needs to be cleaned right. up. This, but yeah. Right. This okay. this okay. is what's on the wiki, and so we already had the, the we knew we had no resources for the white box, and we still don't have any resources for the in-band management there. Okay. Fine. And yeah. so that one, yeah, that one we know is falling off the list in terms of what gets delivered in in this time frame, but it's it's trying to navigate what what the logical points are to do these uh, some release milestones here and then how we manage the schedule leading up through June. So Shad and Matt, thank you both for the feedback. So Sean, it sounds like we should do some offline discussion as well. Any other feedback from the group on this topic for today? And I think the the Sarov is going to do the CBA 2.0 um, um, release planning uh, in the next hour. Um, it's actually um, going to lined up uh, 
as I said, I mean, um, not not with this list, but it will be a much smaller list. Uh, you know, uh, mostly focus on the uh, technology profile and containerization. So, so uh, I think uh, I would suggest uh, the audience, to, uh, the community here, if you're interested about the CIRP CBA schedule, and then join the CBA call next uh, next hour. Okay, thanks, John. Okay, any other topics for today? All right, I think I'll give you a little bit of time back. And for those of you who are joining the SEBA call later, then I will see you on that bridge. With that, I'll go ahead and stop the recording.